Hi everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Budget Investing. My name is Dylan and today we're going to go over what is the best ETF, why should you invest into ETFs as a budget investor, and how they fit into our portfolio here. So first of all, what is an ETF? Really the simple version of an ETF holding that you would buy, or kind of a stock in essence, and it holds many, many stocks underneath it in its name. So for a significantly lower price, I get to hold all of these stocks, just a small fraction of them, and that way I get a huge diversification that allows me to eliminate some risk in my portfolio. So how do you pick an ETF? Of course, there are hundreds and hundreds of different ETFs you can choose from. They range from the different sectors or there's different styles through making you a passive income or growing your money over time. Of course, you can do the different areas around the world, but you need to narrow it down. You need to know what your goal is and what you're trying to do with your money. So I'm going to show you a few of the different ETFs that I've personally taken a look into and what I think might get you started for a budget investor. All right, so let's just go over a few of the different areas for ETFs that I personally take a look into that allow me to grow my money with my budget. So the first one would be a income ETF. These ETFs are designed around paying you a monthly or even a quarterly dividend, and they want to make sure that's stable so that you don't end up selling your um, ETFs with them. The next one would be a growth ETF. So these are ETFs that are, their sole purpose is growing your capital. They want you to make more money every single month, every quarter, so that, of course, you buy more. The next would be a dividend growth ETF. Now, these ETFs are trying to grow the dividend that they pay you every month. They're not necessarily worrying about it being stable. They just want to make sure that they're giving you more money for the total number of stocks that you own in them. The next would be an index tracking ETF. These are just tracking the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, something like that. They want to mimic it and they want to make it identical so that if you know there are any ups or are there any, any downs, they just follow along with it. These would typically have a very low expense ratio as you're just following along, but there's a huge exposure because you are tracking an entire index. And the next one would be a sector. I think sectors have a huge place to play in potentially growing area. You might not be able to do all the research necessary to pinpoint which company is the best one for you to purchase for a space area. Now you get to buy an ETF that is tracking all of the different companies in that sector and then you get exposure to them so if one of them goes up ma majorly you get that benefit and you don't have to put all of that research into and you're not risking your money as again you're getting that huge set diversification by holding so many different stocks within just one single ETF. So the first set of ETFs that I kind of want to point out are the income ETFs. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the whole purpose of these ETFs is to grow your money for you through dividends and distributions, hopefully monthly, if not quarterly. Now, three that I would take a peek at would be FIE, PFF, and EMB. Now, these are just a few of the many different income ETFs that are out there. Now, FIE is a Canadian Financial Monthly Income ETF. To just give you a quick overview of what you may want to take a look at, of course, the growth of the hypothetical $10,000 that you would put in at inception would have only grown to looks like about $22,000. So there's not a huge growth in capital gains wise, but if you look at their distributions, it is consistent. It is almost always four cents and they are very consistent with that. So you can go back pretty much as far as you want and it just keeps going. It's always four cents every single month. Another thing to quickly look at is the total number of holdings. This particular ETF only holds 27 different stocks under it. So that's nice. You get 27 stocks for one. That's a nice range of exposure for you. Now, another thing that of course that you want to take a peek at is that fee structure. So because there is somebody else that's managing this, there is that fee. So this one's not too bad, about 1%. And of course you can take a look at all of the different stocks that they hold in here. Now I'm just gonna flip over to the JP Morgan um, US Emerging Market Bond ETF. 
So same thing, um, you want to look at those kind of same pieces. It's not going to change too much. Again, only growing your money just a little bit, but of course it is still growing it. And you can look at the distributions that they give. This one, of course, is a little bit higher than just the four cents because their value is $108 per share. But you will see in this ETF that they have 545 different stocks. So you get way more exposure for your money. But this is an emerging markets bond ETF. So this is from all around the world. So they're a different style. They go about making that money in a different way. Of course, you can look at all of the different details yourself and their expense ratio is quite a bit lower. It's only 0.39%, so it's about 0.7% less. And of course, you can go through, look at all of those different stocks as well. And the third one would be PFF. So this is the Preferred Income Securities ETF. So this one's exposed more to just American stocks. Of course, they do have exposure around the world, but you can look at all of those different pieces that we've already looked at. And those are something that you can look at for all of the different ETFs that I'm gonna kind of take you through today. Now, the next type of ETF that I kind of wanna give you a brief overview of is growth ETFs. So these ETFs are designed around growing your money over time. And of course, they wanna do it as rapidly as possible. Growth ETFs typically have a little bit of a higher management fee as these tend to be a little bit more actively traded as they are trying to get into the next hot stock, the one that's growing rapidly so that they can capitalize on that growth that's coming. VUG, QQQ, and ITOT are three that I would look at. Just take a peek, do your own research into them. The VUG is Vanguard's growth ETF. They're another very large ETF type company. They have a lot of information on here. Take a peek. As you can see, if you would have bought back in 2011 when they made this with $10,000, it would have grown all the way up to 44,000, which is a pretty significant growth over time. The QQQ goes and tries to track the NASDAQ, which is, of course, one of the largest exchanges in the world. They have done a fantastic job of mirroring it. As you can see, it's almost identical. They're always just a, a teeny tiny bit up behind, but they're very close. And the other one is the iShares Core S&P Total US Stock Market ETF. This one is another huge opportunity for you to be, to be given a huge exposure to a ton of different companies. It also gives you that opportunity to receive some dividends along with it. You, like I mentioned, there are a lot of companies in here. So there's almost 3,700 total different companies. This is the entire US stock market. So it's really nice as you get that huge exposure, but you also just wanna be aware that you're not exposed to anything else that is with, that is outside of the USA. The last little section that I wanna go over are some sector ETFs. So I think sector ETFs have a great place and a budget investor as they will give you exposure to a specific sector that you might not have all the knowledge necessary to make an appropriate pick. So for example, in the world changing technologies or space, or maybe you think cannabis is going to be a soon exploding area, but you're not sure which company specifically would be the right one to fit in your budget as you don't know which one may get that breakthrough first. But three that I would recommend possibly taking a look at would be ARC, MJ, and CARS. So ARC is a investing firm who makes ETFs that are all about making big changes in the world. So they're in a, they're most famous, which is just the ARC Innovation ETF. This one is strictly designed around those disruptive information or disruptive changes, things that are making huge changes in the world. And of course they have their robotics, they have next generation internet, genomic, and FinTech. And you have to find which one works best for you but their one that they're known for is just ARC. It's, it generates absolutely insane returns for people that have held it in the past, but past performance is not indicative of future performance. Now the next one would be Evolve ETFs CAR, C-A-R-S, and the whole point around this ETF is that you're not sure which company or which stock would be the perfect fit for the next boom in the electric vehicle industry. This ETF gives you a huge exposure to all of the different potential companies in the area 
uh, all around the world, which is really nice. And of course, if you go and look into their actual holdings, of course you have companies like Volkswagen and you have Tesla in here, but you'll see that Tesla's not at the very top. All of these other companies are um, weighted a little bit more, but all of these companies do certain things. So they might make the battery or they might make um, computer chips for it or something along those lines, but they are heavily involved electric car industry. The third one could be potentially a huge money maker for you in the road, and this is for cannabis stocks, and this is MJ. So if you think that the deregulation of cannabis might be something that's happening here in the near future, this could be a huge opportunity for you. But for, like, for myself, I don't know enough about the industry or the, the area to know, hey, this would be a good buy or this would be a terrible pick or anything like that. So this way I, I get a huge exposure to the whole area. So if there is a big boom that comes from any further deregulation, then I can benefit from it. Well, hopefully this gave you an insight into the world of ETFs and which ETF may be the right or the perfect ETF for your portfolio as a budget investor. I think ETFs are a fantastic fit for any budget investor as they give you a huge exposure which really lowers that risk so that you can continue to grow your profits and your portfolio over time. I personally own a couple of the ETFs that I went over today. But I do still focus mainly on those high growth dividend producing companies so that I can continue to grow my money safely over time. But again, ETFs are a fantastic choice. If you enjoyed this video today, please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know, is there anything else that you'd like to learn about or anything you want to see? I'd love to share that information with you. Thanks so much and I'll see you later.